we only owe for direct physical loss. Really? Insurance companies love to say we only owe for direct physical loss because to a layman, the word direct has a connotation to it that makes you believe they are only going to pay for anything that directly happened immediately after the storm, exactly by the storm event, and not anything that occurs afterwards that's still the result of the same event. Direct doesn't mean what they want you to think. So let's talk about what it really does mean. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. So insurance companies are going to tell you that they only owe for direct physical loss because they don't want to pay for anything that occurs as a result of the repairs. We only owe for direct physical loss. It does not mean that they don't owe for any consequence of the repairs. There have been plenty of courts that have had a specific definition for direct physical loss determined in that court system. One of the most popular cases that this came up on is in from 1964, where they defined direct loss and then they defined proximate cause. And those two terms go hand in hand. Let me start off right here by saying I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. A proper definition of direct loss is loss proximately caused by the peril insured against. A proper definition of proximate cause would be that the cause which in a natural and continuous sequence unbroken by any new and intervening cause produces a loss and without which the loss would not have occurred. That's what the courts say. So if we can establish what the proximate cause is and there's no unbroken chain of events caused by a new event, then it is all part of the same proximate cause, which is all part of the same direct loss. And direct physical loss just means that there is a physical, tangible change to the property. If it's direct loss, it could be financial. Direct physical loss is a tangible item, it is physically altered. Direct physical loss is any tangible change to property that occurs as a result of the proximate cause of loss with an unbroken chain of events. It's fairly simple, but it isn't the general layman's way of using the term direct so it confuses you and they know it and so they use it because it works. It's a strategy. I'm not even sure that their adjusters realize that they're saying anything improperly. They probably were taught this. I'm speculating, but I think that that might be true. Let me give you some examples of how this works. Consider this. You've got a pipe burst in a wall, and it seeps water through the insulation. It gets some drywall wet. The floor starts getting wet. It's a wood floor. The insurance company comes in and pays for the wood floor and the drywall, but they refuse to pay for any drywall above that part even though it's required to remove that to gain access to the plumbing to make repairs. And then they tell you, we only owe for direct physical loss. It's a lie. If you can't access the plumbing to make repairs without removing that drywall, then it's the but for argument. If it wasn't for the water loss, you wouldn't have to remove that drywall. That is part of the same proximate cause. The same proximate cause for that drywall to gain access is the same proximate cause for all the water damage to the floor and the rest of the drywall. They owe for it as a direct physical loss because that drywall as it's being removed is a loss in order to gain access to the plumbing to make repairs. Even if they don't cover the plumbing repair, it's still a direct physical loss. Example two, you're on a roof and you say that the roof is not repairable, meaning when you replace a shingle, that the surrounding shingles might get damaged or some other material on the roof gets damaged as you're making that repair and the insurance company doesn't want to pay for all the other materials. So they tell you, we only owe for direct physical loss. And they're trying to say that they only owe for that one shingle. They owe for any consequence that is the result of the covered cause of loss. It's the same proximate cause. If you make repairs and it causes further damage, 
That is a consequence of making the repairs, which is a consequence of the cause of loss. Same proximate cause, unbroken chain of events. The damage caused during that repair is a direct physical loss. They owe for it. Unless their policy says otherwise, they owe for direct physical loss, and that includes this other stuff. So when they tell you we owe for direct physical loss, you can say, you're right, you do. Guess what the definition of that is? It's all this other stuff. As long as there is no chain of events that's broken, then you're set. When the carrier says that they owe for direct physical loss, that also is a little bit weird in your head, isn't it? What, what does that mean? They only owe for direct physical loss. When they say that they only owe something, what they're really trying to tell you is this is how much we pay. Well, there's a whole section in the policy about how they pay for a loss. It's probably titled, How We Pay for a Covered Loss. That whole section tells you how they calculate what it costs to make repairs to do the repair or replacement. And then there's valuation sections. Is this an ACV policy, an RCV policy? Does it have the RPS schedule? That's the valuation. And it'll tell you how they apply that. RCV is how much it costs to replace with new materials. If they pay for the reasonable and necessary cost to make repairs or replace the damaged property, that's what they owe the necessary and reasonable costs. Is it necessary to remove the drywall to gain access to that plumbing? Is it necessary to repair damage that is caused during a roof repair? Yes. Yes, it is. Necessary? Is it necessary for me to drink my own urine? Probably not. So even if you ignore the whole direct physical loss argument, how we settle a covered loss clearly indicates as long as it is a necessary or reasonable expense, it's covered by the policy. It makes no sense that they try to trick you into thinking that direct physical loss is some kind of evaluation. It's not. They owe for any consequence that happens as a result of the proximate cause, the main cause of loss, as long as there is no unbroken chain of events leading up to it with anything new that jumps in the middle of everything. If there's no unbroken chain of events, what does that mean, Matt? What, chain of events? That, that's... Calm down. It's okay. The wind damaged the shingles. A repair is required now. The repair causes damage. That chain of events all leads back to the wind causing the damage. You wouldn't have had to repair the roof by replacing a shingle if it wasn't for the wind you wouldn't have caused damage to the surrounding materials if you didn't have to make the repairs. You see how it all correlates? That's an unbroken chain of events. That is all part of direct physical loss, leading back to the same proximate cause. Anything that is a direct consequence of a covered peril is what direct physical loss pays for. I use terms that are from the insurance industry. Boils down to that. If it's a direct consequence caused by the covered peril, wind, hail, pipe burst, freezing, whatever, direct physical loss entails all of it, even the consequential damages that occur. Don't let them tell you that they only owe for direct physical loss and make you believe that that means a much smaller scope of work. It's just bull. When you're dealing with insurance companies and they start getting into semantic arguments, you really need someone on your side that can interpret the language of that policy and feed it right back to them. You need a public adjuster. Let us deal with the bull.